like us is alive. <laughs> you don't have to venture far from our cities and towns to experience nature in a way you never have before. So refreshing. You may know me as an actor and descendant of Arundhra and Arabana people. But nature is my medicine. Holly's a writer. They have that mythic fairy tale quality. Whose inspiration is the magic of the natural world. Come with us. <laughs> and slow down. as we go back to nature. Come with us as we journey through the country behind Queensland's Gold Coast. Learn how this vibrant land inspires singer John Williamson. Encounter some truly ancient trees and hear unexpected stories of mystery. When did you last immerse yourself in nature? Being in nature permeates your body. How you walk, how you breathe. It affects you physically and spiritually. An invisible force seems to connect everything. While the sights, sounds, textures and smells bring your senses alive. Less than an hour from the Gold Coast, we're going to be walking across Yukumbeer country, through Springbrook National Park, up the mountain to Springbrook Plateau, to the Numbumba Valley, back to the Antarctic Beach Trees Walk. We're walking up Springbrook Mountain. I grew up not far from here, so it feels like coming home. This land was formed from molten lava. It came from the massive Tweed volcano that erupted 23 million years ago. The volcano's epicenter was Wollumbin, deeply sacred to Yugambeh and Bundjalung people. Lava spilled in every direction for up to 100 kilometres before cooling into rock and high plateaus. Springbrook Plateau, overlooking the coast, forms part of a volcanic caldera that locals dub the Green Cauldron. The pathways here take you through Yukumbeh country, where people have lived for tens of thousands of years. Yukumbeh people say from the sky and stars came the creation ancestor, Jabrin. Seeing this land was without form. Jabrin 
created rivers and valleys. This became the homeland of the Yukumbe. We're making our way to a waterfall known as Rainbow Falls. Refreshing. Feel that mess. You can bear people. Say Jabreen sent water to fall on this land and give it life. Cascading here, flowing gently there nurturing all living things along the way. It's gorgeous. Imagine how many people have actually stood here and enjoyed the same cleansing. Since millennia. Thousands and thousands of years, yeah, definitely. It's kind of like a ritual thing, you know, like it's actually, you can pass through this place and be cleansed. People in the past, would have gravitated towards, because everything's here. You get a sense of life, sustenance. I love that feeling. Unless you come from the desert, we never, never have anything like this. Yeah. We belong to this land. It has a real strong connection to our spirit. We come from this place. Beneath Springbrook Mountain is the Numanbar Valley. Here, there's rainforests similar to those that once covered the supercontinent of Gondwana. They're so rare and precious, they're World Heritage listed. Very few areas of rainforest exist like this anymore. So being here, it gives me a sense of reverence. And I think that's why I breathe slower and deeper because I'm aware of how important and precious this place is. Being here is like traveling back in time to the early days of evolution. This species of hoop pines first emerged around 180 million years ago, when dinosaurs roamed the land. We're heading to a formation known as the Natural Bridge. Here, the tremendous power of swirling waters has carved away volcanic rock and broken through to a cave below. Inside this cave live luminescent creatures. Known as glowworms, they're actually rare fungal gnats. They evolved millions of years ago in the dark, wet grottos of Gondwana. 
The air in Namamba Valley thrums with the sound of life. Above the natural bridge is the backyard of a singer-songwriter for whom the valley has long been a haven, John Williamson. Well, you can almost hear that valley breathing. As the day gets older, it starts to sing to you, you know? It's, it's, it's incredible. Oh, it's beautiful up here, though. What a vista. Yeah, I like the way it sweeps. Oh. Yeah. The more you open the ears, the more you hear. But it's a very creative place, and uh, there's high energy. Volcanic energy, I guess, magnetic. I don't understand all that stuff. You just feel it. Yeah, can you feel it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. How much does it influence you in your writing and music and storytelling? Oh, Aaron, I can't stop writing songs about it. I just heard a whip, but the first one goes whip, and then they go. It's not just the valley that inspires John, it's the birds. They carry an amazing story in their DNA that was only recently uncovered. Every songbird in the world evolved in the Gondwanan rainforests. Before radiating outwards in successive waves of migration, where they became the ancestors of every northern hemisphere lark, finch, and nightingale. It could be said that the Australian rainforests are the birthplace of song. I'm always listening for melodies. I love the way the butcher birds actually. They, they write melodies for you. I've pinched, <laughs> I pinched the melody for Rip Rip Woodship. Yeah. <laughs> Over the hill they go. There it is. They're very clever. But the thing about them, you can write their music down. So it's actually Western melodies, you know. They don't have the quarter notes. It's, um, that's our mate, Butcher mm -hmm. Bird. That's the kind of whistle I whistle him up. It's almost suggesting I whistle him up because he knows when I whistle his food. <laughs> but it doesn't work that way. I just think they love singing. It's the joy of it. He is so peaceful, so happy he could scream. Living in the valley, the valley of his dream The butcher bird says it all Sweeter than a violin Here we go. It's been said that giving attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. But I feel like I'm the one receiving the gift. Maybe it's because nature's sounds reduce our stress and calm our bodies. When you're outside, can you hear a bird sing? Can you identify what bird it is? Share a video recording with us on social media at hashtag backtonatureau.
we're walking to the highest part of the rainforest. My Irish Celtic ancestors believed an invisible realm lived intertwined with the earth. Metaphysical forces lived in this realm. And every rock, river and tree possessed its own spirit. This part of the rainforest holds a cluster of ancient trees that have always been sacred to me. Oh, wow, look at them. So this is a little bit like... <laughs> this is a little bit like a homecoming. I'm getting to introduce you to my oldest friends. These are Antarctic beech trees and they're 2,000 years old. These ones in particular? These ones in particular. Ever since I was a little girl, I've come here to them. This is my new friend, Aaron. Hi. He's a, he's a good one. Um... Nice to meet you. <laughs> I've never seen bases of trees like this. Just, I just love the depth of it and just... Yeah. And the strength, like, I mean, that has strength. And they have that mythic fairy tale quality. Oh. You know, when you think about old characters in books and yep. they talk about their limbs being wizened and old and gnarly. She's strong. These trees once covered Gondwana, but now there's only a handful of stands left. At their feet is porphyritic basalt, a rock marked with white crystalline. Produced in the later stages of the Tweed volcano's eruption, porphyritic basalt was sent flying across the landscape when it's broken down by lichen and weather, it creates a low nutrient soil, which the beech trees love. It's as though the volcano, the climate and the lichen conspired to create the home for these precious elders. Land, soil, water, pressure created this moment, and here they stand. There's no separation, everything's totally connected. Having this moment with these trees that are over 2,000 years old, it's pretty special. Just off the path from the beech trees, there's a story shrouded in mystery. Going back to the 1930s, there's been reports along these mountain ranges of a terrifying creature known as a Yowie. And one of the most recent Yowie sightings was right here. In March 1978, a Queensland Parks and Wildlife Ranger, Percy Window, said he was clearing some forests when he heard a strange grunting noise. Investigating, he supposedly saw a tall, hairy creature with a flat face and yellow eyes staring at him. He said it was standing only three or four metres away. 
The creature's smell was so unpleasant, it made Percy vomit. And when he looked back up, it had disappeared. I'm not sure I believe in the Yowie, but if anyone can help us understand the mystery, it will be you can bear man and language researcher, Sean Davies. Who has a strong connection to this country and the importance of its stories. This place is actually a really special place because it's um, an intersection of a number of clan groups. So over in the, uh, the east there is um, the Tweed people. And just over here in the, the northeast, we've got um, Kumba Meori, uh, and the, the Gold Coast people. And just over in the west, over the ranges, is um, my grandmother's people, uh, Migani uh, and Mananjali. The Yukon Bears traditional country is in southeast Queensland and northern New South Wales and composed of nine clans. For us, the, the most important part of a place is its story. We call it a story in English, but I think the Yugumbe word really captures it better because we call it a uh, gaurema, which means to take care of or to respect something. So I was always taught, garima jagun, look after your country. In this place, by telling its story, you respect the country and you take care of it. And you take care of its wagoi, which is its spirit. And we believe that that's made strong by telling the story. God, that's beautiful. I love that. You tell a story to keep yourself strong and to protect country. It's all connected. So, Sean, could you tell us the story of the Yowie? Uh, well, the Yowie here, um, it's actually really important to talk about that for us because the Yowie, we've got two stories about creatures. Um, one's called uh, the Janjiri, and that's uh, the little hairy fella, and he lives in the bushland at the bottom of the, the ranges here. And then there's another one uh, called the Bunyon. And the Bunyon is a creature that's made of rock and it's quite tall. Uh, and we actually say that they cause the, the landslides that exist on our country. And they exist on the area we are in now. There's actually been dozens of different sightings of creatures. As a boy, I actually saw um, well, what, I, what I believe was a Junjiri. He was about, you know, four or five foot tall. He was literally just, you know, turning back, going into the bush. And, uh, you know, when they, people draw me yaois and I say, ah, oh, that looks like a Janjiri. We talk about the powers that they got. Janjiri can take your focus and throw it. They get to choose when you can see them. They walk between, uh, we say two worlds in English, but that we say like wagoi jagon, which is, uh, spirit country, and that's the, the world that they can see. And for us, they're a creature, but they're also a spirit. You'll find we all have those, those beings in our space. The beings dwelling in spirit country are said to sometimes venture into the physical world. They're there to keep things aligned. And they're, they're seen as um, protectors of an area. You know, if you're coming here to be very hateful and disrespectful, you'll probably get a rock dropped on you. But if you're coming here to annoy someone, Junjiri probably take your keys. So they've got a, a cheeky aspect. Yeah. Because the, the caught between two worlds thing, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, I was skeptical before, but, you know, I might be a convert. Yeah. <laughs> the wagoi, the spirit, belongs in both worlds. And when you pass away, it actually flies back into the sky. And our old ones would sit on the hills and they would watch for the shooting stars. And that's um, our, our dead ones, our ones who have left us. That's them going home. There's a shiver in my spine. <laughs> we call that your wagoi. My wagoi. Your wagoi can feel it. And it's telling that story that strengthens that wagoi. Everything in existence fits into our kinship system. And it isn't just about um, our humans, it's also about our manan, uh, which is the rocks. It's also about jali, uh, which are all the trees. And it's also about the jargon itself, the earth.
I thought I was familiar with this place, but even your oldest friends surprise you. I knew this beautiful country strengthened my spirit. Now I understand that telling its stories strengthens its spirit too. We're in a relationship, us and the land. Earth, water, plants, humans. Spirit country. All of life is working together to support all of life. No visit to this land would be complete without tasting its abundance. Grind some macadamias. Macadamias are delicious and so good for you. Evolving in these warm, wet rainforests. Add some torn lemon myrtle leaves. From the local Narang River, we've caught some flathead. Place the fish in flour, a beaten egg, then the nut mixture. Fry three minutes either side. We're also going to make a wild lemon myrtle tea. Crush the leaves, then cover with boiling water and let stand. It smells incredible. With a dollop of local Lily Pilly Chili Jam and some refreshing tea, it's the perfect way to replenish. <laughs>